Hey guys, we've got something a little bit different here today. Our friend Thumb Taco's wonderful streamer in the Facebook community. Pretty sure most people in my community know who he is. He's a, a wonderful variety streamer. Uh, he's decided to end his Facebook journey and uh, move on to uh, YouTube. And uh, he had a lot of insight and feedback on his four-year journey on the platform. Um, brought up some very interesting points and a lot of things that I've been stewing on in my own mind for a very long time. So I thought we'd go through his video today and elaborate further. It's my best way of expressing myself too in regards to how I'm feeling as a content creator. Uh, so let's see what he has to say today, guys. We want to thank you again, Thumb Tacos, for letting us review your video, my friend. So officially, this is my second time quitting Facebook. Last year at June, I quit Facebook gaming. I ran into a similar situation that I'm actually currently dealing with right now, but I realized that fundamentally I am streaming for the wrong reasons. When I Ah, okay. Before we get any further, I want to say that this is a little bit of a trap that not only content creators and streamers fall into, but all entertainers, I think, uh, being that I've been a content creator for seven years and a DJ, they're both coincidentally very similar actually um yeah when i first started content creating as well guys uh it was a hobby i had another profession and facebook seven years ago wasn't even monetized so i just wanted to build a community and something special as time went on uh the stars aligned we were able to get monetized turn it into a bit of a living and things went more from a hobby to a job which uh came with its own new set of challenges so to speak so I think all entertainers can fall in this trap, especially streamers. I started streaming. My goal was to stream to as many people as possible. Yeah, me too. I worked a full-time job. I could only do this part-time. I am motivated by money, but I'm not motivated by money. We'll see what he's got to say. I did listen to this video before, but I had a break from it because I really wanted to get a fresh take. Um, I love making money too. I don't hide the fact that I like to make a great living uh, doing this or anything that I do. Um, but one, you've got to offer value. And two, it's going to be purpose-driven too. Otherwise, it's a dead-end job and it's soulless. So let's see what Tacos has got to say about this one as well. I know that's confusing. A lot of streamers get a group of people so. and they start making money, side cash while they're live streaming. And that's great. That's a good perk of doing this. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But if you have bigger projections and what your business is, you will know then that the ad revenue and brand deals is where the real money mm. is later in the game of streaming. Now, I got to taste that just a little bit mm. about a year and a half ago. I yeah. So the, the bigger content creators... Um... Forgive me for being ignorant. I'm a 43-year-old guy. I don't know who the in creators are necessarily across all platforms. But the really big guys, affiliate marketing, brand deals, massive ad revenue. They don't have to rely so heavily. Uh, obviously, I'm monetizing for like donations and subs and everything as much. Obviously, being the smaller guy, I'm not going to lie. I do rely on my community a lot more. And I thank you guys for everything that you do for me. Um, but yeah, Tacos is right about everything he's saying. I was streaming to about 150, 200 people. I was getting reached out by companies to promote their stuff. I was getting advertised revenue. Things were going great. Everything that I worked for and planned mm. for in streaming was going really well. Then I got hit with a unoriginal content strike on my page. Ugh. Some of you know what this is if you ever streamed on Facebook. So Thankfully, I haven't actually gotten that strike myself. Um, yeah. But I've heard a lot of people in my close circle, I don't want to mention specifically who without permission, um, but this has been an ongoing problem with uh, creators of all sizes on the platform. It could be genuine, it could be a bug, it could be a mixture of the two, I don't know. But this is a problem across the board and a quite a frequent problem as well. So basically what happened was I accidentally uploaded one of my TikTok videos to my Facebook Reels page. That's where I made a mistake. I figured it out, I dug it out, and I said, hey, can we get my, my notifications going out properly? Because what mm -hmm. happens when you get a strike like that is your reach gets dampened. I was going from 35, 45% recommendations down to five. Drastically uh -huh. cut off 150 viewers down to 70 in yep. a day. And I thought it was a fluke at first. No, it stuck for a long time. And I had Facebook rules, uh, rules with iron fist here, man. I don't know what to tell you. They have such massive control over the algorithm. And I'm pretty sure in the news, Mark Zuckerberg also confessed that he uh, pushes and suppresses certain content uh, in the court, I think he did, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to give false information. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've seen him come under fire with the same question on TV. Maybe it was in an interview. 
Um, but let's continue. I had to go in all my stuff to try to figure out what happened to my page, found that strike, tried to fight it, figured out what it was, cleared it, reached out to Facebook support, let them know, hey, I got rid of that video. And they said, good job. It should disappear in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Five months went by where my viewership was months. going down and down and down because my reach wasn't there. And I still had that strike. Now, this was June of 2023, last summer. That's what uh -huh. drove me to quit the first time. Simply put, anybody that reaches, you know, triple di digits in streaming and has to deal with that huge drop off, it kind of- Oh, yeah. So I guess you could say uh, with ourselves, just to compare with Tarko's, uh, I know Tarko's had some really, really big numbers doing all these crazy Mario World hacks. Very, very, very popular. Uh, my big game was Resident Evil. Uh, I started blowing up massively for the first time on Facebook in 2020, probably around June, July, actually. And uh, we're not just talking like 100 people. We're talking between a 400 to 80, uh, 800 people a stream average. And uh, yeah, this was consistently for six months. Long story short, Resident Evil streams got nerfed. I think a big reason was because of all those nudie streams going around and all of a sudden it wasn't being pushed by Facebook. And, and yeah, I plummeted back down from hundreds to 50 uh, I don't care who you are. If you've worked so hard to build something out and you take like an 80 to 90% drop in your results, it's going to crush your ego, your self-esteem, and you ain't going to feel good. It's just a normal reaction. And uh, you have to really be able to handle failure in, in this game, seriously. It kind of makes you feel like crap as a streamer, like you're not good enough or you're not yeah, good at right? what you're doing. That was a mental battle that I was dealing with last year. And... I still had the principle of I want to stream on a platform that's going to give me the possibility to get the most live viewers in my chat. Facebook couldn't do that at that time because they killed my reach. So I left mm -hmm. Facebook, went to YouTube and tried to build there. It was it was a major financial cut, but we were making some progress. It was going OK. Two See, one small regret I had was it took me so long to go back and dual stream on YouTube as well. Our YouTube has also gone really well. Um, it's slowly but steadily building. It's great. I actually had to stop streaming on YouTube myself for two and a half years because I had an exclusivity partner contract on Facebook. And uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. Knowing what I know now, uh, I would have never accepted that deal. But let's continue. Weeks after I left Facebook, I got a notification that they lifted the strike. I start thinking about it. I'm like, I'm going to go try to stream. I'm going to go see what happens. I go live, 118 viewers right off the bat when I came back. Went live again, 120. When yeah. again, around 120 again the lights were back on my right to get over 100 in uh late 2023 early 2024 th these are not rookie numbers these are really 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 big uh numbers on facebook these days you're up in the upper echelon if you can get over 100 uh people watching on a gaming page now uh because yeah the gaming program's just not pushed here anymore guys recommendations were around 25 30 percent everything was back to where yeah, good it was. job man the reach getting more viewers in my live stream my goal as a content creator so that lasted for a little while and i kept working at it but it was about four or five months after i came back right before winter where things started to slow down again mm -hmm. and i noticed that my recommendations were going less and less and less and i noticed that my friends who are streamers on the platform were seeing this decline and this drop off and a lot of people were leaving this was about the time when kick started really taking off and a lot of people were jumping to kick and yeah, there, there was a little bit of a hype train on Kick for a while, probably this time last year. And uh, I don't know if, if Kick pushed a, a magic button, but I remember when I first started dual streaming on Kick about a year ago, I was certainly getting a lot more exposure for my gaming content than I am now. Maybe they've just gone on a different direction uh, now because I don't want to go on too much of a tangent because I know they prioritize, I think, more the in real life and the gambling stuff. Uh, but at the time, they were really, really trying to push people's exposure, I think, to get people off platforms like Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Twitch to, to come and join Kick, obviously. But uh, yeah, let's continue. And the atmosphere of streaming was just changing. Less and less people were giving a damn about it on Facebook in general. That's fine. We have to adjust as content creators all the time for the ups and downs and ebbs and flows of streaming. But what you need to realize, for a live streamer, if you're mm -hmm. not bringing in enough new people, the people that get sick of you and move on... That's how your number is going to drop. You have uh -huh. to yeah, I, 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 I just want to continue here, guys. Um, and I know I say this until my face goes blue. And I know you guys are probably sick of hearing it. But this is one of the most important points to bring up again. 
is that we're shrinking because you have a lot of loyal regulars, but just think of streaming like a Netflix TV show, you know, after like five, six seasons, it's going to run its course and people are going to move on. It, it's no different here. You could be the best thing since slight spread, but people change, the interests change. Very few are going to hang around forever. And if you don't have that influx of new people coming in, um, you're toast. And, and that's why we're going down in numbers on one coin only. I mean, there could be things that I improve. I'm not going to say that I'm perfect, but I stream a lot consistently, mix up my gains, make a lot of content, work very, very hard, harder than I have in a long time right now, actually. And yeah, new people are not coming in on Facebook. We're actually losing followers, whereas on YouTube, because I'm pushing the algorithm in the right way over there, we're actually slowly growing. I mean, it's not much, it's like small numbers, but I mean, we're getting like over a hundred subs a month. So I don't know why we're doing something right on YouTube and then following the content creator rules on Facebook is not bringing us any extra exposure, but that's what's happening. And now our numbers are dwindling and we're going backwards. Enough influx of people for the people that go out, keep it going. It's not like, you entertain a person for one night and they're there for life. You mm -hmm. could get somebody like that. I have a couple of them. You guys are awesome. Yeah, I love you, you guys are. too. You know but who you are as well. people come in and watch for a handful of times and then they move on. And yeah, right. catch you again in a couple of weeks. And, and I don't hold that against like you. part of their daily routine. <laughs> so without enough people coming in while people are going out, you're going to uh -huh. see that drop off. And that's, that's what the we biggest issue. Seeing. And it was going fast. So then I started posting VOD videos, videos on demand, host a little video that was three to eight minutes long. And we could start making ad revenue on those videos, but- Aha, uh -huh. and you know what guys, that was a big saving grace for me as well. Not only for page growth, I was making a lot of VODs too. You guys know I've been doing little gaming videos every single day, or at least I was for like a good few years. It bring new people in to see the page. Well, at least like the page. I mean, it'd be questionable whether they would actually join the stream, but they'd be bringing people into the page and they'd be generating really big ad revenue. Uh, in the height of my VODs, you know, I might earn a fair chunk of change a month. And so if the star donations and the subscriptions weren't that big, it wasn't a big deal back in the day. You know, I didn't have to panic so much and because, you know, I diversified and I had a few streams of revenue and everything. For whatever reason, that's all been taken away, at least on my neck of the woods, so to speak. But let's see what happened to tacos. Something else was happening too. Our follower numbers were skyrocketing. I have I have gotten over 10,000 followers in this little window of time. It was insane. We just oh, reached 20,000. Next thing I know, we were crossing the 30,000 mark in followers. The one thing I noticed was none of those new followers ever made it to a live stream. They don't even know what Thumb Tacos is or what I do. So it became very apparent to me that this platform was became really becoming like fake. It was like fluff. All the big pages you'd see with tons of followers and you go to their live streams, there's nobody in there. We were all fluffed up with this fake following. Facebook wouldn't notify our followers. Uh -huh. even if they I can confirm and I don't want to say too much. So I'm going to say allegedly, um, but I used to have a relationship with a guy that used to be uh, the gaming partner, I guess you could say coordinator in Australia. And he said back, I think it was in 2022, that maybe it was 2021. It was between 2021 and 2022. But even back then, he said, likes don't matter so much anymore. I hope not too many people have heard that because you think about all the people that are doing ad campaigns to grow their pages, get likes and followers and everything like that, where I get told straight from Facebook themselves that likes don't matter that much. <sighs> kind of annoys me too because out of my 155,000 followers I would say probably about 130,000 are organic but I mean I paid for ad campaigns where I probably got a maybe 20,000 people coming to my page through advertising so to hear that and know how many thousands of dollars I've spent over the last seven years yeah, not impressed. Not not impressed. Did five percent? Like, just tell five percent of my following, and it would be an awesome night. They never did that.
they never turned the lights back on in this period. So I had to do something. I wanted to stay in control and I wasn't gaining the, the live viewers that I wanted for my stream. So I started multi-streaming to YouTube. At first, mm -hmm. YouTube was slow. It was hard to balance between two platforms. So we do the multi-stream for a while it and takes I started time. seeing that YouTube is going from seven to 10 viewers to, you know, 10 to 12 viewers over the weeks and then all of a sudden 15 to 20 viewers and then yeah. all of a sudden we get to a point where youtube is keeping up with facebook it was yeah, that's working. where we're at YouTube too enormous and yeah we, we we can get up to like 30 to 35 concurrence on youtube if we're playing something that people really really enjoy so and and that was our trajectory too when i first went back on youtube we're lucky to get seven or eight and yeah, it just slowly started snowballing just from constantly, consistently making content. And if there's any chance of me having bigger numbers in my live stream, I felt like I needed to lean towards that. So in the back of my head at this point, I was already thinking about it and mentally getting ready to pull the plug. Fast forward a few weeks after this, now this about a month ago, we were, where we're at in the timeline here. I know this is kind of confusing. I'm trying to be transparent here. I got doxxed on my stream. That's where somebody comes in and drops your personal information. But not only that, the encouraged illegal activity along with this doxing which makes makes it a felony so it was a little bit different yeah, right. than the typical doxing after i get done streaming mm -hmm. i have to call the local police to stay uh my local police they come out to my house i have to go over heavy, the whole situation i have to explain what swatting is go through this whole mess my family was threatened i can't believe that in this day and age uh certain police especially in the united states where streaming is massively prevalent they don't know what swatting is that's that's unbelievable to me i, I don't know where tacos lives but i'm very surprised going on a little bit of a tangent now but i, I know we're gonna get somewhere so let's continue extended family was threatened it was very messy uncomfortable i hated going through that moved on from that now i reach out to facebook support i have the little blue check mark you know the little little check mark so i can get a hold of somebody if i have a problem i thought maybe a felony would get their attention right get through their messages finally get a hold of somebody on the phone and we keep getting disconnected because the way they communicate with you is an automated message mm -hmm. through messenger so if they send you a message at like one two in the morning which they were and you don't see it till seven in the morning you get greeted with a message that says sorry this conversation's been timed out we hope oh my gosh yeah Sorry, Facebook, you're guilty of this one. Um, that's if I can actually get a message back from support at all. The last couple of times I've tried to message them for anything, it's just been all crickets. But yeah, if you need to open a support ticket, whether it's about payments or a feature that's not working on the stream, um, they'll close it before the issue is resolved just because I'm going to assume it could be wrong that they can't be bothered dealing with it. They'll just automatically close before any issue has been resolved. They might ask you a couple questions and then you might reply back with an answer. Support close. Like it's, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And you can probably ask a few of our other friends in the community and they've gone through exactly the same thing that you're satisfied with the results. And then you have to start all over and do it again. Yep. I have screenshots, I have stream referrals. They don't keep any of the information on file. They ask you all over again. Them. All this evidence built up and like I 10 got stuck in or whatever with is. Facebook support. While I'm dealing with live chats breaking and all the other problems on Facebook, it's not good. Mentally, I'm not doing well. I'm not. I don't like hearing that tacos, man. I, I don't like hearing that, bro. Um. My inbox is always open to you, man. I mean, I, I think we need to talk about these things and stick together because I think the reality is what we do as content creators, the freedom it provides, and, you know, we, we're digital nomads. We get to work doing things we love. Even though it has a massive amount of um, challenges, it still does come with great privilege. And so it's it, it's it's not going to come with a lot of empathy, obviously, you know what I mean? Um, for example, let, let's not pretend that working 10 hours as a content creator is as hard as someone going out there and laying bricks for 10 hours. I mean, it has a different type of challenge, sure, especially mentally, like entertaining people and finding what people want and keeping them happy. It's freaking tough. But uh, my heart goes out to you, man. You really got me in the feels there. I know exactly how you feel happy streaming on a platform that 
has nobody at the helm. It's vacant. I'm more and more getting closer and closer to letting go of Facebook. And then Stone Mountain 64, who is the biggest streamer I know and watch, decides that he's gonna get rid of his exclusivity to Facebook and start streaming to Twitch and YouTube and all that You're other stuff. You're the biggest guy left, eh? Hey? Nothing is going well for him either. He's one mm. of the people like, if the top dogs are leaving the platform, you know something's up. You know that it's not good. You know it's not working. He also mentioned, and this was the nail in the coffin, I do believe for me, he mentioned that he had a he had a strike or a glitch on his page for uh -huh. two years and they didn't fix it. He's your so imagine that guy. So Stone Mountain, for those of you who don't know, he's uh, the, he, well, I should say he was the biggest streamer uh, exclusive to Facebook, the, the the big golden egg, the exclusive partner. Um, most casual people know who he was or, or know who he is or at least knew who he was. Um, popular variety streamer, I think did a lot of Call of Duty. Um, in the height of Facebook's heyday, always would have thousands of people uh, watching him, super, super popular. And, and like he's dwindled almost to double figures himself right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, if Facebook can't, look after the problems of their golden egg and their big breadwinner. Um, I mean, what's that going to say to the rest of us? Your biggest streamer in Facebook, you didn't fix whatever glitch he had. You didn't give yeah, him he's a golden egg. egg. What are they going to do for us? A yeah, exactly. Like me, a tiny little grid of sand. What are they going to do for you? That blue check mark is a scam. So I had to come with a choice and decide why am I still streaming on Facebook after all this crap, everything I went through, why am I still streaming on Facebook? I was streaming there because of the money. I wasn't streaming there because of my original goal as a content creator, which is as many viewers as I can get in front of the stream on any given night, growing the community, growing the live viewer count is my goal as a content creator. Yeah. See, that's a tricky one because, I mean, that was my goal as a content creator too, and still is, of course, uh, to grow as much as I possibly can. Um, yeah, on Facebook, we're not growing right now. Thankfully, uh, we're growing on some of the other platforms, so it's, it's given me some kind of sanity. But on Facebook right now, we're not growing. And so, yeah, I'm not going to like a, a big incentive for streaming on Facebook right now is obviously to look after the wonderful community we have, but the financial incentive is is probably massive now, I'll admit, just because the other is not happening. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just, uh, I mean, as I said, if you're working to make a living and to grow and you're not growing, I mean, what's left? You know what I mean? So um, as I said, I love looking after who we have. We have an amazing community at one coin only, but like Taco said before, and not to go too much off his current topic, people aren't coming in. They're just funneling out. At the end of the day, we ain't going to have a one coin, at least not on Facebook. So, yeah, man, I, I totally feel him. Because that does mean more money later on in a different way. It brings on more of a legitimacy and business approach to what yeah. live streaming can be. And I, like I agree said, with you, man. I, That's I where I want to go to. A little bit, and it, it's worth it. It's worth every bit of effort to get to that level. I promise you. Because you don't feel like you're yanking, constantly yanking money out of your viewers' pockets. You can start supplementing different revenue streams from different areas. Yeah, and, and that's what I've said to you guys, too. I, I know I have to rely on the community heavily right now. You guys have been so amazing to me. But I've said many times, and you can quote me, you can find the video. Um... I don't want to be doing that forever. I would love to get to the size where you have ad revenue, brand deals, all that kind of thing. Um, I know I work bloody hard for everything I earn, but I also know that I'm not owed it. And part of me feels a little bit guilty as well um, because I don't have those other avenues yet. And eventually I just, I, I came to the point where Facebook's never going to turn the lights back on. I don't I think don't, Facebook it doesn't feel like it this time. Platform. At least game streaming anymore on their platform. It costs them too much money. They don't care. And no matter what I do, like I'm pretty sure even if it all came back, I think I have a better chance on YouTube. I think it's going to work out. I think it's going to be just fine. Uh, I'm not really concerned about it. And at least when I go live on YouTube, I know that I'm going live for my original goal, my driving goal that keeps me streaming night after night with the goal and ambition of getting as many live viewers into that live stream. And I, I have to be at the place that works with that idea in mind. Basically. Yeah, I'm kind of in two minds. Um, I mean, in one hand, yeah, you can go all in, 
uh, on one streaming platform, which is actually totally fine as long as you're using all the other social medias as a funnel with different types of uh, content like VODs on demand, real shorts, whatever, posts, things like that. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of like streaming on multiple platforms uh, to get more exposure, even on the live streaming front. I, I can see it both ways. Um, however, I do wonder if streaming on four different platforms at the same time is spreading myself too thin. So, you know, these are questions to ask myself. Um, at the end of the day, tacos, man, I mean, if you feel like you can do the best being on one platform uh, and it's good for your mental health and your drive and your mission, then that might be the best choice. I don't know if I would completely lock out the the option of multi-streaming on all platforms, but uh, I mean, you can always go back to that if you change your mind, I guess. Facebook just isn't that anymore. My viewers that sat through this video and listened to it all, I appreciate you. I hope you guys come over to YouTube, check out a live stream sometime. Um, it's just Thumb Tacos on YouTube. If you're catching this on Facebook, if you're on YouTube already and watching this, hell yeah, hit that bell or whatever is down below to be rad uh streamers if you are wondering how facebook's going and you're thinking about it as an op uh, opportunity i wouldn't start there um i would try i would do whatever you could to get on tiktok i think uh new pages have a, a big track record of actually blowing up on facebook to be honest that's how facebook i think catches people with their business model you know if you create a page and you engage a, a new market and everything you are going to get a lot of organic reach in the beginning, I think even now. But where they catch you is it's all cut all of a sudden to entice you to buy the ad revenue to get uh, non-organic reach and, and people funneling in. I'm getting ads all the time now. Oh, this post will reach so-and-so if you spend an extra $14. It's just like, we're already making you a lot of money off different revenue streams, Facebook. Why are we going to give it back to you? Because TikTok is like early Facebook right now where you can get a bunch of momentum. But once you have that momentum on a different platform that's algorith algorithmic, it's a hard word to say. Once you get to that it point <laughs> uh, of getting like people in on like TikTok or something like that, try to funnel them into a Twitch or into a YouTube channel. That's my recommendation now uh, in 2024, four years of streaming. I'm not quitting. I'm I hope not, Tacos. You're one of the best in the game, I'm not even my friend. Evolving. I'm just I'm just streaming on YouTube. I've been doing it for like six months now. I love it. I love YouTube streaming. It's great. It's fair. You should do it too. It's been pretty good to me below, over there too. Think. Um, I appreciate you all. Have a great day. You too, buddy. All right, thank you for watching, guys. I mean, let us know what you think in in the comments. It wasn't supposed to be a whinge video or anything, but these are, are topics that I've been thinking about for a long time, and and Thumb Tacos video really spoke to me. I thought I'd do a review on it. So thank you for letting me share your video, bud. And uh, thank you to everyone who watched. I'll see you on the next one, guys. You all take care. Let me know what you think.